This is Optima's UHD60, a projector that comes with significant investment on your part, the consumer, a far cry from the $500 price point of good old fashioned 1080p. While true that there are cheaper 4K options like the PX747 from ViewSonic or the BenQ TK800, whichever tickles your fancy, both taking a less of a hit when it comes to entering those credit card digits into the Amazon payment screen. So is the image produced by the UHD60 as something like the TK800 and its close counterparts, or is it just better, or is it so good it's like finding a new so recently there's been a trend afoot on the projector market with quite a few options by all the big players showing 4K projectors using pixel shift technology. One thing is becoming apparent with all manufacturers, affordability in the 4K options available to you guys is actually lowering in cost and all of them are trying to come in or create a projector that seems to be around the thousand pounds or thereabouts price point. This is all very good news for you guys. So what about the UHD60? A few things first. The UHD60 in several ways is considered one of the best sub 2000 pound projectors on the market. It has one of the highest lumen ratings at 3000, highest contrast ratio at a million to one, and it also happens to be one of the quietest projectors in its class. In my testing it came in around 27 decibels. So at the time of filming this video the UHD60 costs around £1899, at least on Amazon UK, and the cheapest price that I've managed to find on the UK market is about £1500 from some obscure eBay seller. So a quick look at the projector physically and the overall build quality. Now there's no denying it, it's a big projector as you may be able to tell. Also it weighs quite a bit coming in a little under 10 kilos out of the box. The lens on the projector is mounted in the centre and like the TK800 and the PXM47. I personally prefer having it mounted in the centre. I find it slightly less of a headache aligning the image. Aside from the front IR sensor nothing much else to talk about here. On the left side there's just a big cutout for venting and heat dissipation but on the right side you have a selection of buttons usually what you would expect to find on the top of a projector. Here it's integrated nicely onto the side so kudos to Optima for their implementation, I like it a lot. Two rows of three very narrow rectangular buttons, followed by two larger buttons and two indicator LEDs as well. Coming round to the rear we find 1x HDMI 1.4a, 1x HDMI 2.0 with HTCP 2.2, connectivity basically ensuring that you're compatible with 4K devices like your Blu-ray player. We also have a little legacy in the way of a VGA in, audio input and output via 3.5mm port. We have an optical input, a USB 2.0 port and a USB Type-A for power, i.e. to power your Fire Stick or your Chromecast an RJ45 input and you also get an RS232C and if you're wondering what that's used for is to connect a DTE device like your computer to a modem and finally we also have a 12 volt trigger so a pretty comprehensive selection of ports what you would normally expect on a projector of this price point. Coming back around to the top of the projector you're going to see a split in the panel push on the centre of the panel to unlock it and then you'll expose the focus wheel and the tilt shift dial. I do like how it's hidden it looks quite minimalistic in the design the panel itself though however is pretty cheaply made but it's fun functional and realistically how often are you really going to be accessing it. Also on the side we can see the lamp replacement cover, build quality wise not overly impressed. So moving on to the more important stuff starting with the claim 3000 ounce lumens, it did really well. Honestly it was actually putting out close to the claim rating, especially in bright mode, that said the bright mode does seem to have a slightly stronger than average green bias so be prepared for some adjustments if you want to actually use this projector in the daytime in bright mode. As with any Optima projector that has the brilliant colour feature, I set mine pretty high, usually to an 8 or a 9 just in case you're wondering. Point to note though, in a completely dark theatre room, you might want to actually rein it in a bit, maybe a 6 to a 7, which should give you an overall boost in contrast and saturation, but a lot of people will pretty much stick to the uh, brilliant setting at 10 and forget about it, let's face it, it puts out the most amount of lumens. With Optima's HD27 and the HD29 Derby, which we tested recently, the out the box settings were pretty good. I can't say that with this one, you have to tweak it a fair bit, but once you do, you're going to get one gorgeous image, and if you've invested in a good quality script, hey what's up guys, Mike back with another video. So I've got a really cool gaming projector that we're going to be checking out on today's video. It's a brand new projector from ViewSonic called the PX706 HD. It's a projector that was designed with big screen gaming at home in mind with a high brightness of 3000 ANSI lumens, a 1080p native resolution and a short throw lens and it's also capable of one hell of a good image, possibly one of the best I've seen all year at 1080p. Let's talk about the PX706 was released I think sometime back in uh, July, maybe early August. This projector was designed from the ground up and heavily marketed towards gamers with the 16.4 millisecond response time and yes while that might be nowhere near the one millisecond capability of a gaming monitor but trust me when I say 16 milliseconds is as good as it gets on even the best of projectors when it comes to gaming but this is also very suited to those with limited space
space thanks to its wide angle short throw lens being able to deliver a 100 inch image from around four and a half feet back. The MSRP on this projector based on ViewSonic's website is $785 but it's going on Amazon for around $700 and it's already marked on Amazon as one of their choice products so that's always a good sign. So let me run through those all important specs for you first. Here's a sneak peek, so this is what out the box settings look like on this projector. So in terms of those specs, brightness of 3000 ANSI lumens, it has 1.7 billion colours so it's got 10 bit colour, it's got dynamic contrast ratio 22,000 to 1, the lens does have a 1.2 optical zoom. In terms of the lamp life in dynamic eco you're going to get about 15,000 hours, in normal lamp mode you'll get 4,000. The projector's only got one single 5 watt speakers but it does get extra marks for having 1x USB 3.1 a type connector for hooking up a mobile phone we'll talk about that later on in the video moving on So initial impressions while holding the PX706 HD is the fact that it's a very boxy but compact design. I mean the projector itself measures 30cm in length, 22cm in depth and only 11.5cm in height making it perfect if you're looking for a portable gaming projector. The projector also weighs £6 making it pretty light too. Along the front of the projector the most notable thing is the inclusion of a tethered lens cover which is always welcome especially with a lens like this because this has got quite a big concave design to the lens. Aside from that we also have the front IR sensor, that's about it. Nothing but ventilation and a tie point on the left and right sides of the projector, well that's what you would assume when you first look at it. The reason for the large cutout on the side relates back to ViewSonic's proprietary Sonic Expert technology. What that basically means is it incorporates a large speaker chamber housing a more powerful amplifier to deliver a full 20Hz to 20kHz sound range. I understand the thinking but I must honestly admit I was not completely sold. This is not to say that the audio derived from this little guy produces is very bad or anything like that. In fact, the sound quality is pretty good, much better than something like Optima's HD 143X. On the top of the projector you can see the bulb housing cover, you've got the zoom and the focus ring and the usual selection of buttons. The power button has three dots protruding and the enter key has a dash making the selection process much easier especially when you're in a dark room. The inclusion of the blank button and the colour mode button are also two buttons that physically to have on the projector is actually quite nice. On the base of the projector we also have one adjustable feet which seems a little clunky. I'm not a fan of the oversized design here. There is also two fixed feet and mounting points for permanent installation of this projector instead of just placing it on the coffee table. Let's get back to the projector's main target market which is gamers. How good is gaming mode on the PX706 HD? First let me tell you what I was actually working with. So I tested with my old Xbox 360 and my gaming PC running on a GTX 1070. Yes I'm not a console gamer, I am a PC gamer. Also to note as I use a custom grey screen I've adjusted the colour strength a little for my liking but as a side note sports standard and gaming mode all come in similar in terms of brightness when you actually switch between the three modes just under 2100 lumens if you're looking for a figure. With a little tolerance of maybe 200 lumens up or down, gaming mode seems to favour a slight blue bias. I leave the brilliant colour setting at 8 just in case you guys were wondering, which is obviously the default setting. I just find increasing it further seems to saturate the image a little bit too much for my liking. One thing you will notice is if you do any manual keystone correction and you switch to the fastest gaming mode for that 16 millisecond response rate, the projector wipes your keystone correction settings. This is why I feel that a permanent installation would be the best fit for any serious gamer looking to pick up this projector. Heavy keystone correction is always best avoided for the simple reason you don't want to lose any lumens or you may start seeing scaling artifacts which ruin the image quality. This is true for pretty much most projectors. In terms of what I thought of the gaming experience on this projector, it's very impressive. There was no notable delay from keyboard or controller press to the action being translated on the screen. The experience was very seamless. Motion blur or stuttering from scene changes on FPS games like Doom and Fortnite were again something that barely existed even without switching to the fastest gaming optimized settings. I mean for gaming I can recommend this projector enough and if you're a casual or serious gamer this is a projector that you should definitely check out further but I would recommend a fixed installation for you serious gamers so you can switch on the fastest gaming setting. And for you unbox junkies what's included is you get an instruction manual with some batteries, two bundles of cable for the UK and Europe and you also get a good quality type C cable. 
That cable is not only good for actually streaming content, but you can charge any USB Type-C device as well as streaming video files from your smartphone or tablet. So next we come to fan noise. Now while I will admit in quiet scenes, especially in movies, it's definitely audible while only using the built-in 5 watt speaker, but alas, most of you will not be using the built-in speaker. You'll be using something like a soundbar, a 5.1 setup, or even a custom speaker setup via an AV receiver and an amplifier. This is exactly what I'm using. And in that scenario, the noise level is not noticeable, not even while you're watching a soap or normal TV like EastEnders, for example, you can't actually hear the fan noise. So with that in mind, bullets flying or things exploding or cars accelerating away in Forza, fan noise is really not an issue on the PX706 HD. So some of you might have seen this on the community tab on our YouTube channel or maybe just saw it on the Facebook page. Let me explain a little bit why this is now my favourite 1080p projector of 2018. In terms of image quality this is as good as something like the HD29 or even the BenQ W2000. The image is sharp and I mean sharp from left to right, it's crispy as they come. As long as it's set up correctly and that you don't go over the recommended 120 inch screen size, the colors also look fantastic, perfect amount of saturations and the black levels are also on point, distinguishing different dark objects in the same scenes, it looks really good, there are no issues. Also there's a good amount of three dimensional depth, now this is very important personally for me as well as it helps to you know, create that immersive experience. Brightness uniformity was also so solid. Granted losing a small amount on the edges, but that's never going to be the point of your focus, especially when you're playing games or even watching a movie. This is one well-rounded projector, priced well for a short throw projector. The PX706 HD deserves its gaming credentials, delivering a great gaming experience, not just for newbies or casual gamers, but for those serious gamers as well, while maintaining one of the sharpest 100 inch images at 1080p that I've seen in 2018. If you've got any questions, you know exactly what to do. I will do my best to get back to you. I'll be back with the next video. Thank you for watching. Maybe go ahead and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. So we checked out the Xiaomi laser projector over six months ago, and in this video, I'll be sharing my experience of the projector that replaced my living room TV permanently. So after installing the English settings menu, you can see that video if you need help with that. I'll have it linked in the video description. So two updates later, one broken remote control, many hours and a few days spent trying to run the Google Play Store on this projector. Should you buy this ultra short throw projector or should you be running away from it? So let's start with price. Since I first reviewed it, there has been a little drop in price, fluctuating anywhere between £1,300, maybe even lower to £1,500. It even peaked at £1,750. Again, this will depend on where you're looking. Price is an important factor here. For about £200 more here in the UK, you can pick up something like a big TV, like a 55-inch Panasonic uh, TX55, which is a HDR 4K OLED all singing, all dancing TV. So this takes me to my next point convenience. Say you're considering this projector over something like a good pixel shifting 4K projector around the same price point of 13 to 1500 pounds like the ViewSonic PX747 or the UHD 300X from Optima. I mention this purely because a lot of you have asked this very same question. The Xiaomi projector is far more easy to set up. Place it on a flat surface like a TV cabinet, point it at the wall, out the box you've got a perfect image and great audio and it works great on a white painted wall. Of course you're going to have to spend five minutes adding the English settings to get the uh, kind of good user experience and take advantage of all the features. Now take the second scenario. Unless you're actually willing and you're actually planning on setting up a dedicated home theatre room, in which case you should be, you know, already have a price in your head of extras and you're willing to spend £500 to £1,000 on top of the cost of the projector on stuff like ceiling mounts, spending money on cable extensions, cable management, good quality projector screen. You're also going to require either a 2.1 soundbar and a sub setup or a 5.1 setup with some audio video receiver, some cables and various other things. So when you add all this up, even if you were to buy a cheap but decent 5.1 system with a receiver which includes all the cable, it's still going to cost you about £350 to £500 on top to get any kind of decent audio quality to make a good viewing experience. So again, that is the added cost here over the Xiaomi laser projector. 
Now in terms of any internal hardware problems that I've experienced with this projector over the past six months, I've literally got nothing to complain about. It's not Mr. B. Fan noise has not got worse with me using it for around six to eight hours most days. And on that note, the side vents I should mention do get very dusty. So I clean them every week without fail. I also clean the left and right sensor and the projection lens area with a DSLR Zeiss lens wipe every week with no ill effects. This also helps the image quality stay in tip top condition. You also have the better lamp life over non laser based projector and in some cases better black levels and white outputs as well. So this image was taken on the ViewSonic PX747, a 4K projector or the brightest 4K projector in its class. And if you look at the grill detail, this is the area that you'll be able to tell the difference between 4K and 1080p. So here's the Xiaomi laser projector. Now if you looked at the grill on the first image, compare it to the Xiaomi, you'll see that there is some fine details missing. But in terms of the overall image quality, I don't actually think the gap is that big. Also, since installing the English Settings app, I'm able to use some of the pre-built apps that came with the projector, like Xiaomi's TV Manager. Here you can boost the memory, you can clean trash, you can even check your network speeds, and even deep clean the entire projector. And the UI and the graphics on this thing is remarkably nice and very clean and very user-friendly. It's nice to be able to use some of the pre-built apps that came with the projector since installing the English Settings. So that's really good. So let's address one of the most requested questions I've had from you guys over the past few months. A lot of you have been emailing me and commenting, have I managed to run the official Google Play Store on this projector? Well, first I've tried various different versions and combinations of the Google Play Store and the Google Play Services. Now, if you're wondering about the Play Services, you need that to make the Play Store work, i.e. different version numbers I've tried on both apps. Now, while some allowed the Play Store to open, most of the time it will just freeze up and crash after about 30 seconds so the moment you navigate over to an app and try and hit that app it will just crash if i ever do crack it obviously there will be a video but for now i wish i had better news for you guys i haven't had any success as of yet that is actually worth noting i did strangely have some success with apps like netflix and strangely amazon prime video which actually run pretty well to my surprise and in terms of streaming media content off your mobile phone or tablet via Miracast, AirPlay, DNLA, there was no issues. Now I managed to stream videos that I had on my Samsung Galaxy Note 8 to the projector and there was no kind of audio issue out of sync, there was no kind of uh, video quality drop and there was no buffering issue, it was buttery smooth. So again, over the last six months I was pretty impressed. I think it goes without saying that this is by far one of the best 1080p projectors that is currently on the market, be it probably the most expensive 1080p short throw projector on the market. In terms of image quality, this thing is absolutely fantastic, and especially in movie mode, as you can see, it looks, color accuracy is absolutely remarkable, and that laser light source really does make a big difference. The projector looks like a piece of art. It runs really smooth. It's fairly quiet, although it does generate some heat, but if you want a good quality projector that isn't 4k but it has to be a short throw so you got no overheads in terms of audio setup and cabling then this is definitely one to consider there's actually an offer code for this projector at the moment i think it's about 1200 pound which is probably one of the lowest prices that we've seen it at i'll have details of it in the video description if you've got any questions as always leave them in the comment section and i'll do my best to answer them thanks for watching i'll catch you next time Hey, what's up everybody, Mike back with another video. So today we're going to be checking out one of ViewSonic's top tier products, the ViewSonic PX747 4K. Now in ViewSonic's own words, and I quote, this projector comes equipped with 3500 ANSI lumens that delivers a clear detailed image even in daylight. This claim is based on and limited to 3500 ANSI lumen DLP 4K UHD projectors costing under $1,999 as of the first quarter of 2018. So that's still a pretty bold claim. We're going to put the PX747 through its paces and I'll tell you by the end of this video if this thing is worth the investment. Boxing, let me cut this thing open, there you go. And you're greeted by a bundle of cables and what looks like a user guide and two AAA batteries for your remote control. Three power cables, depending on where you are in the world, you're covered straight out of the box. We also get what looks like a VGA cable. Yeah, that's a VGA. And a remote control that looks very familiar to an Optima projector that we recently checked out and it does have backlit keys.
believe it or not, I've already broken a pretty expensive projector this week, so I'm not breaking another one. This thing is on loan from ViewSonic. Also, a big shout out to them for sending it over so I can actually show you guys. In terms of the PX747, just to give you kind of an overview of the product, this thing has been designed from the ground up and it's utilizing the latest 0.47 DLP chipset along with having Rec 2020 color standard, no Rec 709 here. The whole body, the lens, everything has been designed from the ground up and a lot of the time and energy has been spent on developing the color technology inside this projector. So let's run through the specs so you guys get an overview of what you're actually getting. So here are those all important facts and figures before you make a purchasing decision. The 0.47 DMD is one that has been tweaked. Brightness of 3500 ANSI lumens. Contrast ratio in Super Eco mode 12,000 to 1. Lamp life in normal 4,000. Lamp life in Super Eco 15,000. Throw ratio 1.47 to 1.76. 100 inch screen you'll get around 3.2 meters. Keystone correction of 40 degree plus and minus, and then you got your optical zoom of 1.2x. Noise level in eco mode was around 27 decibels, but I'll show you a little clip of that later on in the video. The speaker on this projector is a 10 watt speaker, and honestly, it sounds pretty damn good. Another awesome thing that ViewSonic have done with this PX747 is that even if you're utilizing the maximum 1.2 zoom, light loss on this thing is a measly 3%, which is just remarkable. Brightness. Now that's one of the key words associated with this projector and a big noticeable difference between this and something like BenQ's HD 2550 or even Optima's UHD 50 aside obviously from the higher cost of around $1500 is bright mode on this projector instead of looking green as most projectors do in bright mode or having green overtones the ViewSonic PX747 does something different. It has a natural white kind of overtone in comparison. The whole perception of KN completely disappears making the image a lot more user friendly for home environment as opposed to using bright mode in an office. Most of you will know that this really isn't the case and it's just your brain playing tricks on you. The PX747's bright mode pretty much was designed with colour accuracy as one of its primary objectives and honestly it does show. One of my slight gripes with the UHD 300X was sometimes in a motion panning scene if you imagine like on a movie and it moves from left to right there could be a little bit more of the expected judder that you would anticipate but the PX747 seems to handle that a lot better. That said black levels are adequate but nothing amazing but good enough at this price point. Point to note though that the UHD 300X did deliver better black levels in my opinion. So physically taking a look at the PX747 you can see it's got these quite thick aggressive lines and honestly the form factor of this projector seems smaller than Optima's UHD 300X. There's a pretty beefy looking IR sensor as well which I guess is a nice thing and a small little view sonic sticker and aside from that that is about it from the front. Moving around to the left side you can see again quite a bit of venting going on starting from the bottom edge there's also what looks like a tie down point yeah if you're going to use it in some kind of retail or office environment and on the other side again you've got plenty of venting there's two screws located up here that you will need to remove if you want to get into the top of the projector or to replace the lamp in terms of rear io you've got audio input audio output you've also got a vga port hdmi 2.0 hdmi 1.4 a mini usb another pc input 5 volt power supply and you've also got a 12 volt trigger. Next to the power input on the bottom there's a small little serial sticker so if you ever need to replace the lamp or send it off for repair that's where you'll find that information. Maybe an optical input as well on the rear would have been a little bit of a nicer touch but at least you got your input and output. Both the focus wheel and the zoom wheel are absolutely perfect on this projector operating buttery smooth however the little tab on the zoom rings could be a little bit bigger for my liking it's a bit stubby. On the base of the projector two adjustable feet can be found front center rear right and a fixed leg on the other corner and you've also got your mounting points if you want to attach it to a ceiling mount. And finally the remote control on this projector looks very similar to what we saw on the Pro 7827HD but instead of having a laser pointer this remote control is actually more functional because it does have that backlit keyboard and if you go ahead and actually press one of the buttons you'll see you'll fire up. You've got good button selections on there just like on the other projector you can actually keystone correct from those two buttons over here you can directly access super eco mode from the green button on the bottom left hand corner and you can even directly go into the color tone menu as well along with everything else so yeah happy with it. 
and fan noise on this projector when you actually move away from eco mode, which is what I mainly use. This projector in the brightest setting turned up around 33 decibels, sitting about 1.5 meters away. That was perfectly acceptable. And again, it's a solid performance. So HDR straight out of the box, if you switch it on this is what you can expect and then if you go ahead and actually adjust the settings a little bit you can get it to look like this and again this obviously adds a lot more three dimensional depth to your video which is kind of what you want. I've adjusted the red and the blue and knocked down the green a little bit to get this and put the gamma up to about 1.4 which is right for my screen. So that's enough of me jabbering on, let me show you exactly so there you have it guys, the ViewSonic PX747, one hell of a budget 4K projector. Most of the times I saw it on. So what you're looking at on screen right now is something very special. This is the projector industry heading in the right direction. Specifically, this is Optima's UHD 300X, a native 4K HDR ready projector that you can pick up for under a thousand pound. And we're gonna be checking it out right now. <laughs> Now on the last video I mentioned win a mystery prize of over $350. If you would like to get involved then all you have to do, quite simple, share this video on your Facebook or Twitter page and keep it on there until the 20th of June. Follow the Tech404 Facebook page and that's it. Nothing else and a winner will be announced at random on the 20th of June. So before we go ahead and actually do the whole unboxing part and I'll show you exactly what you get for your thousand pound, the UHD 300X is far from a small projector. This is quite big. It's about the same size as my Xiaomi laser projector, just thicker. The UHD 300X again is one of the newer 4K HDR projectors on the market released at the start of 2018. And if memory serves correctly, it hit the shelves around late February or early March this year. Again, Optima have done a surprisingly nice job in terms of the guts of the UHD 300X without too many compromises. So how about those all important facts and figures? Now the UHD 300X obviously is a DLP chip projector. I couldn't actually track down exactly what chip it was so apologies for that. The resolution obviously is UHD 3840x2160 native 4K, brightness of 2200 lumens, contrast ratio of 250,000 to 1 and honestly when you actually see how crisp and detail and the amount of depth that image really has as you can see from this still I can actually believe that. Keystone 40 degree plus and uh, minus, screen size max of up to 300 inches but you will need obviously 25 feet to get that 300 inch screen. 100 inch screen from around 8 feet or just over 8 feet, optical zoom of 1.3x, Economy mode, lamp life will be 10,000 hours, which is about what you would expect. And under normal lamp life, you'll get 4,000 hours. Now the replacement bulb will range from anywhere between 90 to 120 pounds. So not the cheapest, but better than I had actually thought. In terms of contents, you get a very basic instruction manual and you get some AAA batteries. We get a European power cable. We also get the UK power cable and we also get that remote control. Now this remote control is the same one as we saw on the HD143X, Keystone Correction, Source, Menu, all of the important buttons are actually on there and the remote control is backlit. Now taking a look at the actual projector, you can see the scale of this projector now. It is not a small projector. On the top of the projector, this whole white kind of clear minimalistic look looks really nice. The top section of it near the actual tilt shift has got this textured material and the back is just kind of a glossy white finish. If I tilt this up, you guys can see that the corner venting, that most of the uh, Optima HD 142 and the 143 and the 144 all have this kind of corner vented design. It's got this metal bar that goes around with the Optima logo and you know what that lens along the front has even got a lens cap so nothing to moan about here and right there on the upper right hand corner on the front you've got the IR sensor and if you look here on the right side of the projector you can see that there is a speaker and this metal bar kind of just comes not quite to the end a little bit of a weird design element here. Same again, more of the same again on the other side, except for the fact you've got a tie down point and the other speaker. So just to give you guys an idea of the quality of the built-in speakers, they're not bad, but they're not great either. There is a little bit of distortion when you actually crank up the volume. This projector also needs to be placed tight to the ceiling, angled down towards the center of the screen, or you should have it placed on the floor, looking up at the center of the screen. That'll give you the best image quality 
what you're looking at on screen. So I've got mine low down, angled up. So the good build quality continues when you look at the top of the projector, three LED indicator lights and the buttons on the UHD 300X are again well made, Optima haven't actually skimmed here either. So here comes the butt. Now the zoom toggle on the uh, UHD 300X, while it's nice and smooth to operate, it does feel a bit clunky and it's a bit hard to actually get, you know, like a precision kind of control. Same thing can be said for that tilt shift. But while I say that, the tilt shift again works, but it is all plastic. It doesn't have that same premium kind of quality that we actually saw on the uh, ViewSonic Pro 7827, which was an all metal dial. So just to give you guys a bit of context, here's me using the tilt shift and I'm trying to be precise and it doesn't have that smooth kind of transition as the metal dial did on the ViewSonic. But again, 4K HDR for under a thousand pound, so I can forgive it, but it does work. And finally, in terms of actually focusing the projector, no issues, very smooth. So in terms of connectivity on the UHD 300X, we've got two HDMI 2.0 ports, that's the main thing, PS Pro, Xbox One, all of that good stuff, one VGA, one audio input as well. In terms of outputs, you've got the 3.5mm out, you've got the optical out, you've got the USB-A 1.5 amp port, and you've also got a USB-A service port and an RS-232 and a 12 volt trigger. So how about the user experience from the point of a novice projector user or somebody who's just bought their first projector or somebody who's just switched over to Optima. In terms of the way the Optima layout is, I quite like it. I've used Optima projectors now for a few times and I find it pretty easy but then again I'm doing this all the time. To get to the main bulk of the settings you can do that from your imaging menu. You can actually shift your images in uh, image, images, images in all four direction. You can also use the digital zoom. You can also use the keystone correction. Those functionality buttons are actually built into the remote so you don't have to traipse through the menu. In terms of other settings you've got your dynamic black and by the way the dynamic black the issue that I had with the 143x when watching certain kind of content and it flickering it doesn't happen on this projector everything is very user-friendly in my opinion and whatever you need you can access this projector also has that super wide aspect ratio as well built in to the menu so that's quite nice if that's your kind of uh, feel for your home theater setup in terms of things that annoyed me, it was again that 10 second timeout on the remote. So especially when you're new and you're actually using it, to, for the menu to time out after 10 seconds max is just annoying. You can also create ISF day and night modes, so you can have day settings and night settings. And this is one of those projectors where the investment of a couple of hundred pounds would be worth it to get somebody to come in and calibrate both your day and night modes. So how about some video clips? Now, in terms of the source, I used it through a laptop, I used it through my Virgin Media set-top box, and I also used the B-Link 6K TV box, which supports HDR playback. So, enjoy. So there you have it, guys, the Optima UHD 300X, one of the most affordable 4K HDR-ready projectors on the market today. Link in the video description if you guys want to check it out. And for those of you not in the UK, I'll link some other really affordable 4K projectors that you guys can check out. In terms of anything else, feel free to go ahead and share this video either on your Facebook or Twitter, and then go ahead and use the link in the video description to go like the Tech 404 Facebook page, and you might win yourself a $350 mystery prize. If you guys have any questions regarding anything to do with the UHD 300X, drop them in the comment section, or if you guys need a bit of advice, drop it in the comment section, and I will do my best to answer it. Until next time, my name is Mike, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.